And uh, this is a this is a um, an organization that has the um, has the authority to create money at, uh, by the stroke of a key, and um, they don't get audited. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see that you've joined every other Republican in Congress and three quarters of Congress in total in supporting that audit. That's actually what I usually do. I'm usually in quite uh, the same. Dana. The same. Oh, I okay. I am in the same line as most Republicans in Congress. Okay, that's the end of the. Uh, the questioning period. Now the candidates will, will give their closing statements. We'll begin with John. Three minutes. Thank you again for coming tonight. As I said earlier, that there are different points of view in the, our party about some of the issues you have heard us debate. I want to ask you a question. Which one of us would Nancy Pelosi rather run against? I'm gl uh, glad that most of us agree, in fact, Dan and I agree on, mo on many issues, probably 90%. And for those of you who don't agree with me on some things, keep in mind that some of those very issues on which you don't agree with me are the things that are going to open up all the possibilities for us to reach out across the political spectrum. And I'd say that would be, a, be an area of concern for the Democrat elite. Nancy Pelosi and the Democrat machine don't want to face a Republican candidate who talks about individual liberty, about restraining government. And, protecting, and about protecting all freedoms across the board, the entire Bill of Rights. Nothing about Dana Walsh's campaign frightens the Democrats. They've seen it before. They know how Ms. Walsh performed in 2008. They'd be happy to have her again as the Republican candidate. Uh, some folks have mentioned, and it has been uh, throughout this campaign, some folks have given me a hard time about supporting <laughs> Ron Paul, of all people. Um, I, of course, I have no qualms or apologies about that, but at least I had a Republican candidate to support. According to the records of the Department of Elections, Ms. Walsh didn't vote in the 2008 re uh, Republican presidential primary. Now, there's also the legitimate question of Ms. Walsh's fundraising. Now, if you look at her FEC report, it shows that she has spent 90% of the money that she raised on fundraising itself. This is exactly what she did in 2008. This is not money going to fight Nancy Pelosi. This is money that's going to commercial fundraising firms in Virginia and Ohio. Why is this important? If you feel the single most important fight we face this year is to reclaim Congress, then you have to understand that San Francisco in this battle is ground zero. It begins here in the home of Nancy Pelosi. Republicans have to do better in 2010, and I think the choice is clear. You can, you can support a candidate whose campaign, whose 2008 campaign, speaks for itself, or you can vote for a candidate who's helping to build our party by registering new voters, helping to build our party by enlisting new volunteers, and energizing our base in San Francisco. You can select a nominee who actually lives in the district. And most importantly, a candidate whose positions on key issues will not be a barrier to being heard by the tens of thousands of independents and de moderate Democrats whose votes we need in order to win elections in San Francisco. Republicans in San Francisco can have a great year in 2010, but only if we choose the right candidate challenging the most powerful Democrat in Congress. I humbly submit that I am that candidate. I'd be honored to have your support, and I ask for your vote. Thank you very much. We have a unique opportunity in this election, but I guess I have to answer a quick answers to his questions. You know, John, you know that at this point in my campaign with my fundraising, you know very well because you tried to get my fundraisers to work for you and they wouldn't. What happens in a campaign like mine is you p spend that money in the beginning and you get that money to spend toward the end of the campaign when you need it to fight Nancy Pelosi. But the question is not, who, would, who is going to be most upsetting to Nancy Pelosi? I think the big question is, who do Republicans want to have represent them? Because I think they don't want a candidate who advocates things like, I think he could be made kind of a, a laughing stock. He advocates abolishing the IRS. I mean, certainly, here we sit a week after we just filed our tax returns. It has a warm and fuzzy feeling to it, but we need a candidate that talks about serious issues, about current legislation that we have to repeal. I also think we don't want a candidate who advocates things that will take power away from you. This election is about giving power back to the people. John wants to repeal the 17th Amendment. The 17th Amendment actually takes the vote away from you, would not allow you to vote against Barbara Boxer. The 17th Amendment, if he repealed it like he wants,
would, would allow the legislature of California to pick our senator. I don't think that's the kind of message we want in 2010. And I also think that Republicans want a candidate in this race that in a world that we have right now with an enemy that is reckless and ruthless, that they don't want someone who thinks that a good foreign policy or a good energy policy is being nice to, uh, to oil producing countries. We've seen the apology tour. It has not gotten us where we want to go. So this district has a, a real role in to 2010. People are going to look to this district, and I don't think they want to see someone who's talking about ideas like abolishing the, the IRS and, and repealing the 17th Amendment. It's not the message we want to give. We want to give the message that we are running against the most powerful woman in the United States and to say that the kind of power she is wielding and the way she is abusing it is not what we want in our Congress. This is, as ma in many ways, it's a symbolic race and it, it makes it no less important. We have to make it very clear and, and catering to the anti-war crowd is not what Republicans in this city want to see. We know this. We've done some polling. They are not interested. If he wants to run that campaign, he could have run as a libertarian, which I think he should have. We could have cleaned Nancy's clock. And so I think we have a high-profile race where we have to have a Republican that, that is in front of the entire Republican congressional candidate group throughout the country and that will make them proud of the person running against Nancy Pelosi. I'm the one that can run against her and everything she stands for. I know we commend both candidates. Uh, this debate has been taped uh, for production and editing, I think on Mr. Doherty, is that correct? You'll be able to watch it. And I think what you'll know, and you'll see immediately, especially if you watch other de primary debates, that this primary debate and this primary, these primary candidates outstrip most Republican candidates throughout the country in their ability to answer very tough questions and to have the kind of confidence that only comes in Republican districts of 40, 50 percent. This is a district of 8 percent. Let's give them another hand, please. <laughs>